Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation C VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be trying out the team that finished second at the 2023 Japanese National Championships. It features some very unique team members, including a Safety Goggles Poison Terra Gunk Shot Annihilate with Close Combat, Rage Fist, and Protect, as well as a Life Orb Mimikyu with Shadow Sneak, Play Rough, Wood Hammer, and Curse. The Annihilate drew my eye in particular because most Annihilates in this format are either run with Citrus and Leftovers and Bulk Up with Beat Up, for example, or Choice Card Final Gambit. I've never really seen an Annihilate set like this before, and to see it finish second all the way at the Japanese National Championships is really cool in particular. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below. And thank you so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, I'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's dive into things. First of all, just some quick context about the Japanese National Championships. This tournament took place in the middle of June and 118 players competed in total. The Japanese National Championships is always known to be one of the most difficult VGC tournaments in the world, partially because of how difficult it is to even qualify for the tournament, but also partially because of how unique the tournament structure is. This tournament was a best of one double elimination bracket all the way until the grand finals, which was best of three. On the first day of competition, it was entirely closed team sheet, and on the second day, it was open team sheets, but with closed Terra types. As a result, a lot of players to try to do well in this tournament would prioritize strategies that were obviously more best of one focus and could thrive a little bit more in the closed team sheet environment. So the team that we're featuring today, of course, finished in second place, but you can see the rest of the teams linked down all down below. And yeah, I think like, a team with both Annihilate and Mimikyu finishing all the way at the very top is really exciting to see. And this kind of Annihilate set, I've just not seen it all up until this team in particular. So let's break down the team. Breaking down the team now, the first Pokemon to highlight, of course, is Annihilate. As always, Rental, Pace, and Team Creator are linked down in the description below if you want to try it out yourselves. Now, the thing about this Annihilate is that it has a lot of things that catch your opponents off guard. First of all, it's got Safety Goggles. Second of all, it's got Poison Terra and Gunk Shot. And third of all, it's Close Combat. Also, most people expect Annihilate to have a fair amount of bulk. When people see Annihilate in Team Preview, they generally expect one of two sets. Either the Leftovers slash Citrus Berry set with Bulk Up and Rage Fist that tries to stay on the field for forever, or the Choice Card Final Gambit set. In fact, if I saw this team in Team Preview, I was like, okay, it's best of one, it's probably Final Gambit and Annihilate that synergizes really nicely with the rest of the team, but nope, this is completely different. Safety Goggles is really nice just to counter Amoongus, which is one of the most common meta Pokemon, and in a closed team sheet best of one environment, having that trick up your sleeve can make or break a game. Poison Terra and Gunk Shot, first of all, of course, allows you to resist certain types. It also allows you to deal super effective damage into Grass and Fairy type Pokemon. Now, that's really nice because Fluttermane is the most common Pokemon in Regulation C, and if you actually look at the team we're using here in Team Preview, Fluttermane looks really good. I think a lot of players would be like, you know what, I can just Terra Fairy Fluttermane and start going for Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast. Well, Annihilate was like, okay, if you Terra, I just get the super effective Gunk Shot into you and I just knock you out in one hit. And if you don't Terra, well, Iron Bundle can just drop the opposing speed with Icy Wind, and then Annihilate can just KO it with a Rage Fist. So the main point about this Annihilate is that it lures a Fluttermane into a false sense of security, and then you can just knock them out afterwards, which I think is really fun. Bundle, like I mentioned, mainly used for Icy Wind speed control. This is a plus speed booster energy set, very standard. The one I need to call out here is that it's Water Terra rather than Ice Terra. This allows you to get a really powerful Hydro Pump off, and of course allows you to resist Steel, so that's kind of nice into Golden Go, which can be a little bit scary to go up against. And Iron Bundle and Annihilate is one of my favorite leads with this team. The idea is to just start clicking Icy Wind, drop your opponent's speed, outspeed with Annihilate, and start getting big knockouts. Mimikyu is another ghost type on this team that drew my eye to the team, and it is triple offense with Play Rough, Shadow Sneak, Wood Hammer, and Curse. Mimikyu is also one of those Pokemon that when people see in Team Preview, they often expect it to maybe have Trick Room, Will-O-Wisp, maybe even Taunt, but this is just triple attack Mimikyu. The idea is that you've got the Life Orb and Shadow Sneak, which is really nice in just KOing Flutter Main, and you also have Play Rough, which is incredible coverage in the format. There are a lot of Dragon types, for example, such as Dragonite or Garchomp that are weak to it. And Woodhammer gives you really good coverage into Pokemon that are weak to Grass type attacks, like Dondozo, for example. 
Curse exists on this team because otherwise really bulky Pokemon can be kind of annoying to deal with. The Grass Terra plus Curse combo in particular is also a creative solution in dealing with Dondozo because if Dondozo fuses with Tatsugiri, they can't switch out. You get that curse off and they're essentially on a timer. So I also sometimes like leading Mimikyu and Annihilate because you can just have double ghosts out immediately. And if your opponent has a fake out user, for example, like Iron Hands, it puts them into a really tough position. To round things out, you've got Baxcalibur. This is a classic ground Terra set. Nothing too wild to say about this one. The main thing to note is if you're using Baxcalibur, this team doesn't actually have any flying type Pokemon or air balloon Pokemon or levitators. So as a result, you often will be clicking Earthquake next to your partner and that Pokemon will either have to take the Earthquake or you have to protect to avoid the damage. Now, for that reason, Iron Bundle and Baxcalibur is kind of one of my default combinations because you can just drop opposing speeds and Earthquake into Bundle hurts, but it's not going to pick up that much damage, whereas obviously EQing your own Arcanine doesn't feel nearly as good, so you'll want to keep that in mind. Arcanine is one of the final Pokemon on this team, and this is a very interesting set as well. It's actually a full offensive set with Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Extreme Speed, and Protect, instead of moves like Will-O-Wisp or Howl or Snarl, for example. And the idea is that you are able to just do so much damage with Max Attack. As you'll notice, this team is very offensive. Actually, if you look at the EVs about this team, Max Attack, Champau, Max Attack, Arcanine, Max Special Attack, Iron Bundle, Max Attack, Annihilate, Max Attack, Mimikyu, and Max Attack, Baxcalibur. Everything is designed to just hit literally as hard as possible, and of course, Arcanine here is no different. Now, you have the normal Terra Extreme Speed to really catch opposing Pokemon and teams off guard. Forget Dragonite, you've got Dragonite at home, which is Arcanine. Wild Charge is also a really nice tech move, especially in best of one, because you're able to use it to hit water type Pokemon. Normally, people will use water type Pokemon or water Terras to get around Arcanine. For example, water Terra Ting Lu is something that I've run into. Of course, water Terra on just strong water type Pokemon to begin with exists as well, and Gyarados is really common in the format. Well, Wild Charge is able to actually get super effective damage onto all of those, and when you combine that with Champau's Sword of Rune with that defense drop, you can just get big one-hit knockouts that your opponents are almost never going to expect. The final Pokemon here is Champau. This is very standard. The one thing to call out is that it is admin nature rather than jolly nature. Jolly is nice, especially because it allows you to often outspeed Flutter mains that aren't max speed, but some Flutter mains are now opting for max speed, and with this team, you actually have a lot of good anti-Flutter main between Annihilate, Mimikyu with a Shadow Sneak, as well as Baxcalibur with the Assault Vest, so it's better for Champau just to get a little bit of extra damage output. So, yeah, I think sometimes it's really interesting when people team build in VGC, they think they need to have, like, very complex EV spreads, and this team is 4, 252, 252 on 5 of the 6 Pokemon, practically. I mean, Mimikyu here has a little bit more HP, it doesn't have max speed, but it's essentially the same thing. Arcanine here, of course, has a little bit of speed and HP investment, but I think... EVs in Pokemon can be really stressful, but sometimes you can just be straightforward and look to deal as much damage as possible, and that's what exactly this team aims to do. So, in terms of combos that I go with, I think Iron Bundle is a really good lead with practically everything, but I like it with Annihilate and Baxcalibur in particular. I think Annihilate Mimikyu as lead is really nice if they have, for example, normal type attackers or fake out users in general. Champau, of course, synergizes soul with any of the physical attackers with Champau Arcanine, Annihilate, Mimikyu, or Baxcalibur. You can just start dealing large amounts of damage. But I think one of the strengths of this team is that all the Pokemon feel really flexible to bring into a good amount of matchups. So that's it for a quick breakdown. Now let's highlight some weaknesses. The first thing that I'll call out in terms of weaknesses is accuracy. That seems a little bit weird because most of the attacks on this team are 100% accurate, but some of your strongest attacks can miss. I'm talking Gunk Shot on Annihilate, Hydro Pump on Iron Bundle, as well as Ice Cool Crash on Baxcalibur. Because this team has such little bulk to work with, a single miss can often make or break a game because often you're trying to just get a knockout onto a Pokemon. If you miss, then they can just knock you out in return or survive for another turn, and that can be a complete disaster. So if you're playing with this team, you have to accept that accuracy is part of the game, and ideally you put yourself in positions where you don't need to rely on hitting an 80% chance to get a KO or win the game, for example, but sometimes that is just going to be the case. So that is the nature of using a team that has moves that can miss, and with this team, you have less room to work yourself out of it because your Pokemon are relatively frail. I think with this team, things can also go really downhill if you're not able to actually secure big knockouts, so if your opponent has more bulk than expected, that can be a really huge problem. Another thing to point out about this team is that it indexes really heavily on physical attackers, so Pokemon that are ultra, ultra defensive and can take multiple physical attacks can be a big problem as well. And for example, I think with this team, Bundle for speed control is really valuable, but it can be a little bit scary if you go up against an opposing team that has even better speed control like Tailwind, for example. 
Now, my solution in dealing with Tail Tailwind Talonflame is to go for Arcanine and Extreme Speed it to break the Gale Wings and then use a faster Pokemon like Bundle to just KO it. But for example, if they have a Ghost Terra, that can be really scary. And this team does not have any ground resistances or immunities as well. So I think I had one match where I played against a Great Tusk and I found that I was not able to really KO it because they had a good defensive Terra. And it was just spamming Earthquake and Headlong Rush and that gave me a lot of trouble as well. So yeah, o obviously with a team like this, uh, if your opponent is able to just move before you consistently, that can be a really huge problem because this team does not really have that much bulk to work with. And the last thing to call out is that you can't switch very easily. For example, if I lead with the Annihilate or the Mimikyu and I have Iron Bundle in the back, it's really awkward to switch in Iron Bundle and often you're going to want your opponent to pick up a knockout so that you get a free switch in. But if your opponent plays smartly and denies these free switch ins, it can also put you in a problematic situation. So yeah. That's it for the breakdown. Now, let's get into the games. Rank 29 here. All right. We got Flutter Chiyu backs Gyarados Mousehold and the Brute Bonnet. Okay. I think Annihilate is really intriguing here, especially with Poison Terra. I think we got to be a little bit careful about mouse hold here. I think bundle is really good. Uh, bundle plus annihilate feels like a decent lead to me. Mimikyu is pretty compelling here. I've got a super effective shadow sneak into the flutter, play rough into brute bonnet. Champau looks really good on average here. Arcanine does have Wild Charge here, which also makes it more compelling. I find that one of the greatest strengths of this team also ends up being a weakness when I use it, because it feels like the Pokemon are just all so strong, and there are often times where I feel like I can bring all of them into a given matchup, which makes things really interesting. Yeah, I mean, if I Terra Ground this, it's pretty strong. If I don't, it's still okay. I'm going with Mimikyu here, but I honestly think all three of our Pokemon are solid. Like, Mimikyu's main value to me is being able to get a Life Orb Shadow Sneak to just KO Fluttermane, which is really cool. I think objectively, Arcanine is probably the safest pick just because it gives us Intimidate, which is valuable into their physical attackers. And... It can switch into, say, Fluttermane as well. It's going to be Fluttermane and the Mouse Hold. Okay, well, this is really interesting, right? Because I can just Icy Wind, Terra, and either go for, like, Rage Fist onto Flutter or Close Combat onto Mouse Hold. I actually also think I can just Protect here turn one, Terra this, and just attack. That's certainly an option. Like, honestly, the thing I'm considering most is Protect here, Terra this, and then Gunk Shot, because that covers for pretty much anything my opponent could do. I think there's a play where maybe they just go for Protect with their Mouse Hold and then try to Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam. The downside in going for a play like this is that Gunk Shot's uh, accuracy is just not very high. It's 80%, so... We have a decent chance of missing. I mean, my, one of my other questions is whether or not it's even friend guard mouse hold here. It could just be population bomb. If you were population bomb faint here, would actually be a strong option as well. So no Terra. Mouse protects. That's exactly what I want to see. Okay. Hitting gunk shot here would be so huge as they shadow ball into the bundle as well. So all right, let's see. Poison Terra, gunk shot. Nice. That's so huge. Okay. I don't expect this to knock out. Yeah, but I will gladly take that amount of damage. We actually get a poison to boot as well, which is very lucky. Okay. So, with that... Icy Wind... Into a close combat here is the safest play. I think there's a world in which Mousehold goes for a Ghost Terra here to survive close combat. Which 
could make a lot of sense. I think I'm still going to click Icy Win here. If they go for Ghost Terra, that's fine this turn, because I'll get them to commit the Terra, and they don't go for Ghost Terra, which is incredible for us. Okay, nice. Icy Wind hits both. Perfect. Crit's Mouse Hole. That's not going to make a difference because Close Combat was going to finish it off anyway. We'll get Close Combat off here. So we're going to trade the Bundle here for Mouse Hold essentially. And Flutter's obviously incredibly low as well. It's actually Rocky Helmet Mouse. Okay. Oh! Wow, okay. I did not see Trick Room coming as an option at all. That makes this game very interesting. Hmm, fascinating. Okay. I think there's a play... So I guess my fear about Trick Room right now is, like, do we think Fluttermane just switches, right? Maybe they just give up both Pokemon here. Uh, I'm thinking of just double protecting this turn. Flutter does switch, though. It could be Gyarados coming out. Yep. So I've really thought about freeze-drying that slot. Uh, that would have won us the game, actually, immediately there. Maybe that risk was worth taking. I expect ground Terra backs now. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I have Chen Pao in the back. I have Bundle right now. Let's see if it's ground Terra. Yeah, basically, a freeze-drawing onto the Flutter slot would have just won the game immediately. But, like, what I was worried about was obviously them just staying in and Shadow Balling. And I think there's a world in which they just, like, don't make that switch and they just EQ, right? So, we'll double protect. Yeah, and they just Earthquake. I mean, now my question is, do we even get the knockout onto Bundle this next turn with Earthquake plus whatever Gyarados is going for? I'm honestly really not sure. Bundle's pretty tanky. Defensively, so like I'm honestly happy to just freeze dry here. I think one of the key debates is should I consider switching this out right now, right? Because it will be a super effective earthquake and I'm poisoned, but does it really make sense to switch in either of these right now? I think it's better to conserve both focus sash and disguise personally, so we'll go for freeze dry. Yeah. And Rage Fist. Okay, they go for Waterfall. Yeah, I'm surviving this turn, so they're going for a flinch right now. If they don't get the flinch, I think we just win the game right now. Because then, I should KO the Gyarados. Yep, we survive. So, does Waterfall get a flinch right now? If not, then I would imagine Free Shred just KOs them. They bring out Flutter, I double protect, stall out Trick Room. Nice, no flinch. That's huge. Oh, okay, hold on. Gyarados was bulky enough to survive. That also changes things. Wow. That's not even without, like, a... Yeah, that, that's impressive. Okay. Hold on, I gotta think about sequencing this properly, but I, I think I see the vision. So, I think basically right now what I can do is bring out Mimikyu, then I can switch Bundo out into Champow to drop Gyarados' defense and Shadow Sneak to KO that. Then they bring out the... Flutter main. I will protect Champau and just switch Mimikyu out as Flutter faints from poison. Oh, no, or I can just Shadow Sneak. Point being is, I think I bring out Mimikyu right now. I think my main debate is do I KO Gyarados with Shadow Sneak without a defense drop? I think the answer is no. So, with two turns of Trick Room left, yeah, I think I just switch out here. Oh, I do have Wood Hammer as well. But I think we'd use that afterwards. The upside is all three of my Pokemon have a way to hit Excalibur su for super effective, so I'm going to target Gyarados here. Um, my fear here is... Well, I guess I was going to say my fear is they protect, but if they protect, then I can just uh, protect Champau next turn. 
Nice. No protect. Life Orb, Shadow Sneak with the defense drop. KOs Gyarados. Beautiful. They're going to go for Earthquake, presumably. But then now I just uh, double protect. I'm going to take a ton of damage, but that's fine. Yeah, this is exactly how I wanted to sequence it. So I'm going to double protect. Oh, no. I can't protect with Mimikyu, actually. Uh, does that complicate things? I think it's still fine. They bring out Fluttermane. Yeah, because I have Wood Hammer. So what I can do now is protect with Xian Pao. This is going to faint from Poison, obviously. It's the last turn of Trick Room. I think there's multiple ways we could probably win this. I, like, But I want to assume this is Bulky Bax Calibur, right? And I know I have a very powerful Ice Spinner and Wood Hammer. So like my plan here is to just protect with the Xian Pao. Switch Mimikyu out into Bundle. And then next turn, I just Ice Spinner plus Wood Hammer to get the knockout onto them. I think that should win us the game. But this was honestly a really interesting game, right? They had the Trick Room tech, which I definitely didn't expect on Flutter. Like, Flutter survived on turn one relatively well, but we were able to effectively stall out Trick Room, which I'm happy about. And that's because I built up such a huge lead just with that turn one play. Okay, so they just Earthquake here. Yep, that's fine. Okay. I guess my only question now is how fast is the Bax Caliber, right? Like, Mimikyu here is admin to almost max speed. So I'm wondering if I should be Shadow Sneaking and Ice Spinnering instead of going for Wood Hammer. Not sure EQ even KOs, honestly, but I, I would assume we KO here if you have Trick Room on your team is the thing. Also, Mimikyu's base speed is so much higher, right? So... Yeah, I think Ice Spinner and Wood Hammer here is fine. Okay, here's Ice Spinner. Oh, that's just a knockout in itself. Okay, cool. I do want to quickly check if Vaxcalibur could have outsped Mimikyu at hour speed at max speed. So... Because I think if they were jolly Vaxcalibur with max speed, then you might actually outspeed us. But, like... It just makes so little sense to run Jolly Baxcalibur. Like, Mimikyu hits such a specific speed stat. I don't think you're ever really going to cover for that tier. So, I figured I was safe there. In the end, it didn't even end up mattering because Ice Spinner was enough to get the knockout. So, that was good in itself. Um, the idea of Wood Hammering there is, I guess, if they, like, go for Ice Shard and get a critical hit onto Chien Pao and KO Chien Pao, Wood Hammer should just get the KO onto them, I would think. Um, maybe it like, doesn't actually get the knockout, but a Wood Hammer into Shadow Sneak would get the KO, right? So, yeah. But I'm quickly double checking. So Mimikyu with our speed here reaches 143 and Baxcalibur at Jolly Max can hit 152, but you would have to be running Jolly Baxcalibur at max speed. And the odds of that just feel so slim, especially when you have Trick Room with Fluttermane as well. I'd be, I would instead expect like max HP, max attack backs, or maybe you have some investment in speed and take that away from HP. But yeah. Either way, though, I thought that was a really interesting game. We got to show off a lot of fun tricks there, mainly the Gunk Shot Annihilate on turn one into the Flutter. Now, obviously, I could have gone for Rage Fist in that position, but what Gunk Shot covered for was either Mousehold going for a Terra and going for a Follow Me, for example, or not going for a Terra and going for Follow Me, right? If I just Rage Fist and Mousehold Follow Me's, well, that's kind of awkward. It also would have covered and punished a Fairy Terra on Flutter Main in particular, because then I would have gotten the Knockout onto that. And so, yeah, I think the Annihilate set is just really interesting here in general, and... Uh, bundle being able to just get that freeze dry off into Gyarados was really nice. And the main thing was my opponent just didn't have that much offense against the combination of Bundle plus the um, the Poison Terra Annihilate. And so we were able to put in a lot of pressure with that. And uh, Mimikyu and Champau are both pretty good installing out Trick Room because we have Sash on Champau as well as the Disguise on Mimikyu. So timed it perfectly and able to get that knockout onto Bax. Ooh, we've got the Bun here with Chi Yu, Twerkle, Flutter, Jump Luff, and Roaring Moon. Okay. A lot of fire types. A lot of fast-paced damage. So, into this, I think I like Bundle and the Annihilate. And the reason for this is because I can just go for Protect, Poison Terra, and then just go for a Gunk Shot onto Jump Bluff, which otherwise is actually a pretty huge threat to us. Yeah, so I'm down for those two. I think Mimikyu is interesting here. I'm a little bit worried about beating Bun, honestly. We have to ideally make sure it does not get too many boosts. I guess that they lead Bun and... 
No, but if you lead Bon and Chiyu, I can just Hydro Pump your Chiyu if it's Scarf Chiyu. But then I guess they could Terra the Chiyu. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually pretty worried here. What do I want as the last one? I like Chien Pao here. I think it's just like able to get a one-hit knockout onto so many of my opponent's Pokemon. Jump Love, Fluttermane, Chiyu, Roaring Moon potentially. If the Bond goes for a Terra, then I can Sacred Sword it and ignore any defense boost that it has, which is also nice. So I think my, my, my main question here is do you just go for the setup with Chiyu and then do you Terra your Chiyu immediately? That could be the case. Jump Luff and Torkoal. Cool. So in this position, normally they're going to probably try to Sleep Powder into the Bundle slot. So what I want to do is just Protect. Go for the Super Effective Gunk Shop. I don't think I need a Terra here. It's just scary because it's an 80% chance to hit. Oh! Okay, I'm very happy with that. They're trying to just knock out Bundle here, it looks like. And if this is not Focus Ash Jump Love, this is an ideal turn one. Super ideal turn one. Yep, they just go for Leaf Storm. Okay, that's fine. 80% chance to hit right now. Gunk Shot is going to connect. Excellent. And that is a one-hit knockout onto Jump Bluff. Beautiful. I think Jump Love is honestly really scary for this team to go up against because Sleep Powder is able to put everything to sleep. Your response would be either like Mimikyu plus a Nightlife because you can just Grass Terra Mimikyu and then both Pokemon are immune to Sleep Powder. But I like Bundle because it covered for any other lead that my opponent had. So Fluttermane is going to come out, get a Protosynthesis boost. It's going to be special attack. Beautiful. So with that, I think we can go for Icy Wind. So I've got Mimikyu and Shampao in the back. I'm curious if this is a Jack Pack, because if it is, Icy Wind will actually bump it out, which is kind of funny. I'm, I'm kind of, like, basically debating who I should Terra in this battle. Actually, I actually think Terra Bundle is not the worst idea, but I think Terraing this and going for Gunk Shot onto this is also fine. But now my opponent knows I have Gunk Shot. I yeah, actually went for Icy Wind Protect. Yeah, Flutter is going to Protect. That makes sense. I think the other strong play there was just to go for Poison Terra with the Nihilate and then Hydro Pump Close Combat onto the Torkoal slot just to eliminate that. Um, this brings some momentum into my opponent's favor, but I think it's fine. They're probably going to click Eruption here with Torkoal, but let's see if it's a Jack Pack. That would be so funny right now. It is pretty common with Jump Luff. <laughs> nice. Sweet. Yeah, that's the thing. With Jump Love Torkoal, like a Jack Pack is a lot more common than Charcoal or Choice Specs because you're not going to get too many opportunities to get like a super powerful eruption because Torkoal is so slow. Roaring Moon comes out. That's also going to get a boost. Probably speed here. Oh, no, it's attack. Okay. Ooh, attack makes this really interesting then. Hmm. I'm happy to just keep clicking Icy Wind here. Personally, fine going for Icy Wind. Terra here. I mean, Rage Fist into this slot is pretty safe. I think if you're my opponent, you should swap Flutter out into Torkoal, but they're actually going to swap Rory Moon out. Interesting. Okay. Flutter has to Terra here. They don't. So I think Icy Wind and Rage Fist just KOs here. That's one thing this team does so well, right? You can often just deny your opponent from even getting any attacks off because you have Bundle just controlling speed via Icy Wind. There's Poison Terra Annihilate. Beautiful. Icy Wind does not miss. On to the Flutter Main. Drop both speeds. And now we get a Rage Fist. Excellent. And that's a KO. Perfect. So, it's been a couple turns of the battle. My opponent hasn't even really gotten damage off, and Annihilate has gotten two big one-hit knockouts, which is incredible. But 
the main thing in this game was, yeah, I felt like Gunk Shot was just such a pivotal move, and of course, Jump Bluff isn't going to expect to get one hit KO there most of the time, but because we have this tech, it is able to secure us the knockout. So, double checking the board state, two turns of Sunlight left, I still have Chimpow and Mimikyu in the back. We can just go for Freeze Dry here. Flying Terror is pretty common. Still have to respect Overheat from this. As well as Helping Hand. We've got Mimikyu and Shampao in the back. I think here I'm happy to just distribute damage, like Freeze Dry into this slot, and then Close Combat into this slot. Oh, okay, my opponent actually ends up forfeiting, but... I think they probably could have played it out at least for one more turn. I think after that turn, we would have had a really good sense of whether or not the game was just 100% over or not. Because I think in that position, if you have like a good protect with the Roaring Moon, maybe Torkoal gets an overheat off to get a one-hit knockout. That's kind of why I wanted to split my damage to make sure that I like at least was continuing the pace of the battle instead of like doubling into something. I think it's really tempting to double into Roaring Moon there, get the knockout, but then I can give my opponent a chance of coming back if Roaring Moon protects, for example. But we honestly had so many resources left in that game, I think it would have been really difficult for them to pull off a comeback. Okay, for this one, we've got Amoongus, Arcanine, Dragonite, Tusk, Flutter, Chi Yu. Hmm, this might be a Bex Caliber game. We hit so much of their team for good damage. And they have multiple fire types and special attackers. I honestly really like leading Bex Caliber here. And the main thing is with Ground Terror, they just don't have a way to hit this for super effective damage, which is really nice. So, Bex Caliber lead. I think Amoongus with a good Terra is probably one thing to look out for. Everything here has Protect other than Mimikyu, but if I lead Mimikyu, I can't Earthquake Ground Terra very easily. Annihilate is interesting to punish them if they bring Arcanine. Because I get Terra with this too on turn 1. But... Okay, I like Bundle here the most, I think. Being able to just Icy Wind, Ground Terror, EQ sounds really tempting. Chimpow on the back, I think, is really good. And then for the last one, I'm actually thinking about Mimikyu. Like, super effective play rough is really sweet here. A Night Leap is interesting just because of the goggles into Amoongus. Hmm. Amoongus does scare me enough that I actually do want to bring a Night Leap. Because the Night Leap here basically will have a really good matchup into Arcanine and the Amoongus. So, that's the logic in bringing it. But, what do I think they're going to lead with? Flutter Chiyu is obviously a really strong duo, but if they go for that, I can actually just protect Bundle, Ground Terror, EQ, turn 1. Or even just Icy Wind EQ, quite honestly. Dragonite, and Tusk. Okay. So, this is interesting. Uh, I mean, honestly, not too bad of a spot for me. Could be Scarf Tusk. Either of these could Terra, so this could steal Terra right now, for example. I think I prefer to go for an uh, Terra here, so I don't faint to say like a close combat. Icicle Crash and a Dragonite, and actually protect with Bundle on turn one. Because I think conserving Bundle is really nice in this matchup. You're going to Terra first here. Quite interesting. That makes me think it's Dragonite Terraing. Which would be a little frustrating. I mean, maybe Tusk protects here. I was thinking it would be, say, Steel or Fire Tusk, and then you Terra defensively. But that's not the case. Okay. Maybe Tusk is protecting then. If Tusk just ended up attacking, I think it'll be a little bit sad. But I guess what this means is I can just Hydro Pump that slot next turn. The problem is Dragonite's now looking really scary. I can switch into Nihilate, at least. Protect from Bundle. Does Tusk protect? Nope. Dragonite, interestingly enough, though, did not go for Extreme Speed. Get Ice Will Crash off here. Break Multi-Scale. I think you just Low Kick. Okay, I mean, first of all, it's definitely Choice Banded Low Kick, right? Oh my goodness. Uh, hmm. I think here I'm happy to just leave Rush then. 
I could switch backs out as well. Wow, that did so much. <laughs> Honestly, a lot more than I anticipated. Yeah, I am just going to Glaive Rush here and Hydro Pump. Dragonite switches. Okay, maybe into Fluttermane. That's a really good switch. Yeah, I shouldn't have given that to them for free. Hydro connects though, so that should get a one-hit knockout onto Tusk. Nice. So it's Choice Scarf Tusk, Choice Band, Dragonite with Low Kick and E Speed. Um, we didn't see a booster energy on Flutter there either. Uh, if I had just gone for Icicle Crash, they would be in a very winning position, but Glaive Rush to try to get that KO I think is tempting. They bring out Dragonite. Dragonite out here. I still have a Nihilate in the back. This is where I think Mimikyu in the back would have been a lot stronger for me. Because I would have been able to just pressure this with Shadow Sneak. I wonder if this is Specs as well. No booster energy. Could be Life Orb. Could be Sashed. If you're my opponent, it makes sense to just E speed this and then like Moonblast or Shadow Ball into this. I could switch out into Annihilate. But it's a little risky. I think here I just go for Earthquake and Protect. Uh, to get a free switch in. Dragonite should lock itself into Extreme Speed. Oh, it actually clicks Aqua Jet instead. Okay. Yeah, that I, that's a really smart locking because it covers for the Ghost types that I have in the back. So that's very nicely done. Shadow Ball. But I think now we just command control with the Annihilate plus the Bundle. Because I can bring this out. I know you're locked into Aqua Jet. It's so Aqua Jet, E Speed, Low Kick, maybe Outrage as the fourth. And I can just go for Rage Fist here and Icy Wind. The one scary thing here is Icy Wind can miss into Flutter Main, but I think we've got ourselves into a pretty good position here. It would make sense for Flutter to protect and Dragonite to switch out if you had protect here, but I think Specs is a decently likely item on Flutter. If it's Sash, great. If they don't protect, obviously. Uh, Aqua Jet from Dragonite, not really too much of a problem for the Annihilate right now. So I think we've got our opponent into a pretty tricky spot. The worst case here would probably be Flutter, Protect, Dragonite switches out. And like, let's say you brought out a Moongus. Actually, if you brought out Amoongus, I can just Icy Wind, Rage Fist again next turn, but they actually just Aqua Gen into Bundle. Works for me. Okay, Icy Wind connects. Beautiful. Breaks potential Sash on Flutter, and more importantly, drops its speed. Did I miss a booster energy earlier? Whoa. No, it's just... What? It's... Covert Cloak slash Clear Amulet. And it's also really defensive. Huh. I definitely did not see that coming. Okay. Now you can just Aqua Jet this, Moonblast this. But it doesn't look like it's very offensive, so I think I should survive an attack. So I'm actually just going to close combat Dragonite and Protect right now. Yeah, I was so surprised. Oh, wow. That is... I've never seen that before. I really didn't think they'd survive that at combo either. Oh, my goodness. But they just end up protecting, so this is perfect. Wow, I, I legitimately don't think I've ever run into that kind of Flutter main before. Um... But because they didn't even knock out the bundle there, I'm thinking that it's very defensive Flutter main. Like, clearly it's not that specially invested. And so I was thinking Annihilate maybe could take a Shadow Ball or Moonblast. And even if not, I get the free switch in into my Chem Pao. I think a big question... Now, now the game should be over. I don't see any fourth Pokemon they could have to win the game. But that was a very shocking turn. It's going to be Chiyu. Right? And Chem Pao obviously just wins against that. Okay. If you're my opponent, you probably play towards the double protect win con. We know 
where the choice items were. We know this, like, Chiyu being choice is certainly a possibility. I just protect it with Bundle. Basically, I'm worried they double protect. I miss Icy Wind onto this and then Heat Wave double KOs. I think the best play is to actually protect Annihilate here and then just go for an Icy Wind. That breaks a potential Sash on Chiyu and drops its speed. But looks like Flutter is not going to go for the Protect here. And Icy Wind double hits. Cool. I think in that position, like, it covers for a bunch of different things. Choice Scarf Chiyu, Focus Sash Chiyu. I just didn't want them to go for the double Protect Wing Con, Heat Wave double KOs, and suddenly Chiam House playing a 2v1, right? So that's the one scenario I wanted to avoid. But that is such an interesting Flutter main set. I'm curious what other moves it has and what kind of the main purpose of either whether it be Covert Cloak or Clear Amulet is. But that's really cool. Now we just bring out Chien Pao and we are packing a lot of offense. Just close combat and Sacred Sword now. So yeah, like I think Iron Bundle on this team is just so strong in disrupting opposing teams and setting up very valuable speed control and in this game being able to pressure with icy wind was really nice i think the main thing is with my lead i put on a lot of offensive pressure against both of my opponent's pokemon excalibur honestly did a lot less than i anticipated mainly because my opponent went for that low kick which i really just took so much more damage from than expected i think one thing that was big was i guess them just you know giving up great tusk to that hydro pump but the reality with my opponent's team is that given the four pokemon they brought they didn't really have a super free switching into hydro pump their best bet would have been flutter main in that position but my opponent's team was very offensive by nature and so you really want to keep the ball kind of rolling and any switch can give me the opportunity to just get free damage off that being said the dragonite into flutter main switch was really really good on their end but yeah i think uh extreme speed would have been better for my opponent like the problem and I, I can see why they went for aqua chip because at that point i still had two ghost type pokemon that i hadn't revealed in team preview potentially in the back right and so if you lock into e-speed then obviously you're completely useless against those ghost types my opponent was probably really worried about mimikyu but and, and i can see what they were going for if you lock into aqua jet i bring out mimikyu you can just aqua jet and given how bulky the flutter main was i wouldn't be surprised if flutter main could actually take a life orb shadow sneak so i think that's something my opponent was trying to set up for but in the end i didn't even end up bringing mimikyu i brought the annihilate to try to beat amoongus and arcanine but to my opponent's credit they did a good job not even bringing either of those pokemon so mimikyu would have been better i think into my opponent's four ultimately Although I guess if I brought Mimikyu and not Annihilate, I wouldn't have been able to just close combat the Dragonite for a KO, which I guess is also interesting. But had my opponent locked into E-Speed to KO the Baxcalibur, then they would have been able to do more damage into Bundle, and that turn where I was caught off guard, they actually would have been able to get the knockout, and which would obviously change things a little bit. So, yeah. Okay, rank 92, Chien Pao, Chiyu, Flutter, Dragapult, Dondozo, and Ting Lu. Hmm. Very cool team. I guess the main thing is it's like there's three clear duos. Dragapult, Chien Pao, Flutter, Chiyu, Solo Dozo, plus Ting Lu. Solo Dozo with Yawn scares me a good amount. They don't have any ground resistances or immunity. So I'm thinking Bax can be good. For example, one mode is Bax plus Bundle. Nihilip is interesting. I just like don't love its matchup given that my opponent has a lot of Pokemon that can outspeed it. I honestly really like Mimikyu here. We can even Grass Terra, Wood Hammer, Dondozo potentially. Probably Chien Pao. Arcanine's interesting because I do have Wild Charge into Dondozo, and I can normal Terra E Speed as well. Nah, I think it's Chien Pao. Okay. So let's think about the threats to Bexcalibur. Because I brought it in a pre that previous game, and I thought it was going to be so safe in that matchup, and then it just ate up 80 or 70% from a choice band low kick. That was really scary. I think even a single Earthquake here would be pretty strong, but if you're my opponent and you want to have a de good defensive option in a Baxcalibur, Ting Lu plus Dondozo immediately is really strong. You could also lead Dondozo plus anything and just protect whatever, and then go for a Yawn or even Wave Crash onto the Baxcalibur. So, I think Dondozo is going to be a pretty big problem for me here. And I actually wonder if I should have led Mimikyu to have a better response and to lead Dondozo. Yeah. 
Mimikyu would have been a lot stronger here. Okay. So this is an excellent lead by my opponent, so props to them. So with this combo, you should expect to see like Sand Tomb from Tinglu just to trap things in. Dondozo might go for Yawn as well. Tinglu going for a Terra makes sense. Personally, not opposed to trying to just like snipe away at Dondozo because Ting Lu is not as much of a threat to me. So I'm going to protect it and I think Glaive Rush onto Dondozo on turn one. But I wouldn't be surprised if they went Sand Tube plus Yong into the um, Max Calibur slot. This is a really good lead. And like I said, this is, I think, the best response into my Max Calibur. So kudos. I expect maybe like Water Terra here on Ting Lu. Fario. Okay. That actually makes it harder for us as well, because I cannot go for Wave Rush onto you. Here's Protect. Wave Rush number one. Really solid da damage, honestly. There's Sand Tomb. Yep. Did you yawn that slot as well? Probably. Yeah. Uh, I like... Even mention what the worst case scenario would be and my opponent's turn one play, and I still let them go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's just great execution. Nicely done. Uh, you would think Dondozo just protects now, right? I was like thinking, oh, in Sword and Shield, I could go for like Fairy Terra and then set up Misty Terrain, but alas. Nicely done. Really, really nicely done. If I were to replay this, I would lead Mimikyu Champao, Grass Terra Mimikyu, and just Woodhammer Dondozo. I, I like really think I should have thought about that lead a little bit more. I think I tunnel visioned on trying to beat the special attackers too much. I mean, I think Dondozo should always protect here, quite frankly. I'll double up on the Team Lu. Yep. I think Lu probably has Protect as well, though. Let's see. Could be Assault Vest, though. Miss Hydro Pump. Okay. Yeah, it's really not doing too much damage. I'm gonna go for Runation here. Um, If it's Runation Sand Tomb, eh, still haven't really confirmed the item. Hitting Hydro would have been nice just to get some sense of what item my opponent was potentially running. The upside is I do have Champao and Mimikyu in the back, and both of those are, I would say, super strong into my opponent's team. I am just quickly losing resources, right? I don't even know if it's worth freeze-drying Dondozo, because, like, Woodhammer should be able to just knock it out. Like, I think I set up for an endgame where I bring out Champao, Ice Spinner to KO Ting Lu, and then just Woodhammer to KO Dondozo. So I think it's actually more important to get chip damage on a Ting Lu rather than damaging Dozo right now. Because it's tempting to freeze right on Dozo. That's a super effective attack, right? But with Ting Lu's ability, I'm not sure we're getting that KO anyway. And my problem is if then I'm in a position where I can't get a one-hit knockout onto Ting Lu. Because I think the combination of Mimikyu and Champao still has the ability to close this game out for us. Alright, they go for Stomping here. And Yawn into Bundle. Uh, this turn is interesting, because it's like, Dondozo probably doesn't protect. So I could either Freeze Dry plus Glaive Rush into Dondozo. Yeah, I think I, I just have to let Bundle fall asleep here. Basically, I can take the risk here and switch out, but then if they yawn into one of these, I think it's a complete nightmare for me. So, yeah, I'm going to Freeze Dry, Glaive Rush. That was a misclick. Obviously, that should have been into uh, <laughs> into Ting Lu. Okay, we end up staying asleep, but yeah, that was that would have been sad if I ended up actually um, waking up there. Yeah, they go for another Yom. This duo is really effective. You know, it's like Dundozo just kind of stays on the field for forever. It's not very easy to knock out. 
but we are getting there. Um, Sand Tomb here, 45 down to 29, so it actually takes two more hits, which makes things a little bit more complicated, because it would have been really nice to get Xian Pao plus the Mimikyu out simultaneously next to each other. So the main thing I have going for me right now is that I have not committed my Terra yet. I could Terra Grass, Mimikyu, Terra Ghost, Xian Pao. One of the other questions is who do I bring out into the battle right now? If I bring out Mimikyu, I can't protect with it, which is a pretty big issue. Yeah, I guess I bring out Champao then. It's going to be a close finish, but I think my opponent has built up a very, very big lead. Go for Freeze Dry onto Dondozo. They might just Wave Crash me here. I think I'm going to protect here because there's also a world where they just knock out the um, bundle slot, which would allow me to get Mimikyu in for free, and that's what I'm looking for. Because then with Mimikyu, I can just Woodhammer, Dondozo, Ice Spinner into Team Lu, and then go from there. And honestly, Mimikyu Champao is a really good matchup into most of what they have in the back, because it's a lot more frail. So there's Bundle Sleep. Stomping into us. Okay, maybe a double up. Yeah. Hmm. Man, is there ever a world in which I switch Bondo out into Mimikyu and then Spinner into Ting Lu? Because then, given that they went for Yawn and... Oh, I can't switch. Sorry, there's Sand Tomb. <laughs> Just kidding. I guess there's a chance of waking up immediately now, though. I'm not sure Sacred Sword even KOs Dondozo. Ugh. have to go for the KO onto Ting Lu here instead. The bundle stays asleep too. I don't even know if this KOs Ting Lu, but it is Admin. That did nothing! Holy moly. And it is Citrus Berry. Yeah, that's game over. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I just did not realize how little we have for the uh, Ting Lu in particular. This was just a master class in this combination, so really, really well done by my opponent. Like I said, the adjustment I would have made is just Team Lu and uh, Mimikyu lead, and then just Grass Terra uh, would hammer straight up into Dondozo on turn one. Because, like, the main problem in this duo is Dondozo being able to slowly put things to sleep with Yawn. And I actually had enough offense for it, and I even called that out in Team Preview, but I think Backscalibur would have just punished any other combo. But I think I need to put on more pressure against Dondozo in this matchup in particular. It's still not 100% over, though, so I don't want to give up. Um, I think here I'm going to just go Grass Terra, Woodhammer, into Ting Lu. I mean, honestly, Dondozo probably just yawns into Mimikyu, but I think there's a comeback. Uh, there's comeback potential if Dondozo straight up protects this turn. So, Grass Terra. I'm just so sad because I had the tech to beat this, but it's a little bit too late. Grass Terra, Woodhammer. Spinner. Yeah, I think this game highlights one of the weaknesses of this team, which is really, really good defense. This team aims to overwhelm your opponent with offense and just not even give them a chance to move. I think the main interesting thing is if I'm leading Chimpao and Mimikyu, did they ever Terra Dondozo? I'd say very few players would. Spinner into Ting Lu. Yeah, this Ting Lu is so defensive. Like, I think there was also a world in which we could have won if the double spinners just KO Team Lu, but even with two spinners, that was not enough for Team Lu. It is a shame we missed that Hydro Pump earlier, because that would have given us the extra damage that we needed for that to have been a knockout, but Hydro Pump's obviously not the most accurate move, and this team, one of its core weaknesses is having to rely on Hydro Pump and uh, the Gunk Shot. So, Dondozo was literally able to click Yawn into every single one of my Pokemon in this battle, so well done. <laughs> well done. Curse is actually a pretty cool tech here as well, so I think this was me having the right tools to deal with this matchup, just executing it poorly, because I actually think if I clear Dondozo plus Ting Lu, or even just one of the two pieces, the rest of my team, I think, can overwhelm my opponent fairly quickly. But this is one in which I think my opponent just absolutely demolished me in Team Preview. I'm trying to think, I don't think Annihilate would have really solved for too much here, especially with Fairy Terra, and Arcanine wouldn't have changed much either, so... 
The solution straight up is just Mimic Huchi and Pao lead. I'm sure they just double protect here, right? Or actually, you just Sacred Sword this. I'm curious if they're Focus Sash on Chien Pao. So I'll go for that. Yep. Sacred Sword's always safe there because you know Chien Pao just fell asleep on my end, so might as well just guarantee the knockout rather than... It, my opponent could double protect there. Mimikyu would fall asleep. Eh, it doesn't really make a difference, quite frankly. But... Woodhammer almost brings Chien Pao down to Sash. I was curious if it would get the knockout out right. And there's Heavy Slam. So there's Heavy Slam, Yawn, Protect, and presumably Wave Crash, which makes a lot of sense. And Heavy Slam's really good, obviously, into Fluttermane as well. So, yeah, Solo Dondozo can be super, super tanky. And in this case, both Dondozo and Tainlu were able to just survive so many attacks, and the lead duo was just a really, really bad matchup into what my opponent brought. So, very, very nicely ex uh, executed by them. But... When you have losses like that, I think, once again, it's important to reevaluate. Okay, this was a lead duel that I didn't prepare super hard for. What could I have brought to match up well against it? And like I mentioned, Champao plus the Mimikyu is a very interesting solution. So, yeah. I'm just sad because we could have had a game where Grass Terra Mimikyu had a huge impact immediately. Uh, it would have been really nice because I would have just been able to Grass Terra, straight up Woodhammer into the Dondozo slot. I think the main thing is they could have just protected on Tarwana Scout for that. And with Mimikyu, I don't have Protect, so I'd probably just send it and go for it immediately. And if I go for that, then on turn two, of course, they can just go for a Terra with Dondozo. But then the question is, what Terra are you? Steel, I think, is the one that would make the most sense, and that would cause me a lot of problems as well. But then the thing is, maybe I could consider doubling up into like Ting Lu at the subsequent turn. But the Sand Tomb plus Yawn duo can be such a nightmare to go up against when you don't bring the right Pokemon, and my opponent played that perfectly. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much, as always, for joining me. If you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton, and I'll see you all next time. All right, peace.